The Twins of Terror, everybody. This tandem of mechanical mayhem here might possibly be the least friendly solo fight in the entire constant, so you best bring your A-game. From insane amounts of minions to seemingly never-ending charge attacks, they may fight like the Eye of Terror clones they are, however the fight itself is gonna be anything but... Well, depending on how you do it, that is. And we'll get to all that soon. But, because of all that, we're skipping the finding of the terrarium and heading straight to corrupting the thing with some nightmare fuel. Folks, in my mind, if you're going after the twins, chances are you know what you're flipping doing. But in case you don't, here's our Eye of Terror video anyway that goes into the conspicuous chest and all that nonsense. But here's something that even those who do know what's going on might not actually know themselves. Unlike the Eye, the twins do not regenerate health per night, but not only that, if you fail to respawn the twins every night following their first, the terrarium will enter its 15 day cooldown immediately. And that's not good. Not good at all. Do not let this happen. But how do we best prepare for a potential multi-night fight you ask? Well, with speed and the act of separation, folks. That's how. I'm not joking when I call these guys Eye of Terror clones, nor am I pulling your leg when I say their specific tendencies are going to be tough to manage, especially together. But if you know which one to focus on first, and what each of the others actually do, then perhaps that's going to be our greatest advantage. Knowledge. It's simple. Retinazer prefers spawning suspicious peepers far more frequently than spasmatism, and even the eye. While spasmatism is a literal spaz when it comes to charging, and will do so very often and very quickly, especially come phase two. But Spaz will still certainly spawn a peeper here and there, while Retinazer will charge and actually charges further than Spaz, but they do have preferences. That's the point. Now, with all that in mind, I tend to use Retinazer's longer charge to pull it away from Spaz to have a more one-on-one -on -one bout to help focus one down far more quickly than having to juggle both at once. You will have to use a pamphlet at first to do so, of course, and likely throughout the Retinazer fight once minions do start getting up there in numbers, but once you realize separation is key here, things become a breeze. Do this over the course of two nights, and you're gonna be golden. Now, will things be harder once we enter phase two here? Oh, for sure, cause the minion spawns are gonna get dumb. But the fight truly is the same throughout the entire thing, so don't change the strategy. Keep them separated, keep dodging the occasional charge, sleep and focus on the minions when needed, and then bye bye Retinazer. Well done. Just mind that both of these guys will enter their phase twos around 3000 health each, but also note that once one goes berserk, the other will too no matter what. And if one dies, the other enters phase two immediately as well, no matter what their health is at. So just expect, as the fight goes on, things are gonna get harder. It's not fun. Especially if you're trying to fight both at once or close to it, but you know, just don't freaking do that, you numbskulls. Do what we just did with Retinazer and with Spasmatism here, it's just all about the speed. After Retina is dead, we are essentially in a straight up fight with the Eye of Terror again, only it's faster, the boss has 10,000 health this time, it deals a mere 125 damage a hit, and never stops flipping charging. Easy, right? Actually, yes. Yes, it is. As the guy does stop charging here and there to spawn minions, so there's some free damage for ya. The guy is fully dodgeable over and over and over again to help avoid damage altogether, and the minions are sleepable, so just use all that to your advantage. Speed. It's all the speed, folks. Good luck. Oh, or friends. Friends make this fight stupidly easy too if you sleep one guy, focus the other, and then just span the pan flute throughout the fight, so make note there. Now also make note that these guys still do have a close ranged melee, but they don't do it quite often as the eye. In fact, it's really rare. That said, it still hurts when it happens, so remain vigilant. But what about some other viable and accessible strategies here, Beard? Are there any? 
Well, not really, honestly. As followers against the twins will be absolutely worthless, as the eyes deal 250 damage to mobs, which can and will outright one-shot most anything we can recruit to even help, so that's no good. Pitting the twins against various bosses to potentially kill two birds with one stone is definitely a thing one can do, although be warned, the twins are very likely to kill literally every overworld boss in this game with relative ease, so you best have more than and one test subject if you know what I mean, or be ready to finish them off yourself. It's gimmicky, fun, and dangerous, so gunpowder. Gunpowder it is, I guess. Just aside, however, gunpowder could very well work here. Put them to sleep, blow one up with a stack, finish it off, and fight the other as you please. And heck, you could just bring two stacks of the stuff for an even faster fight if you could manage it. You do you. But let's talk loot. Spasmatism will drop three to five gears, two to three electrical doodads, one to two frazzled wires, nightmare fuel, and a green jam. While Retinazer will do the exact same, minus that green jam, as we can expect a yellow in its place. Oh, and whichever is the second to die, anticipate the Shield of Terror drop and a figure sketch to boot. But what does all of this extra loot actually mean for us? Well, a lot actually. Too much to cover here, so head to where you need to be on your own. As we've got to wrap things up here with the Shield of Terror, of course. An actually worthy boss drop when compared to the Eye Mask. The thing is essentially a football helmet in the palm of your hand, while simultaneously being a potential weapon that will deal 51 damage a hit. Now every attack will drain its durability by 2 points for a total of roughly 158 uses if all we do is attack with the thing, but since chances are we won't be doing just that, we should know how to quote unquote refuel the weapon. If we take a food's health value and multiply it by 4, we can then add that number to the food's hunger multiplied by 1.75 in order to see exactly how much durability a food will restore. That's, or just use monster meat and a rod exclusively for both the eye and the shield. Your choice. And there you have it, everyone. A six month late guide on the Twins of Terror, of course. They're tough cookies, so don't underestimate them and don't try to fight them at the same freaking time. Speed and separation, folks. Speed and separation. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.